This episode of Paranormal Heart is brought to you by Nodakian Studios. If you're looking for a fine piece of stoneware pottery, check out Nodakian Studios at nodakianstudios.com, as well as on Facebook, where she periodically gives away pieces of pottery. Again, check out Nodakian Studios at nodakianstudios.com. Welcome to Paranormal Heart, a place where people can talk about their paranormal experiences. With your host, Cat Ward. Welcome back, folks, to Paranormal Heart Podcast, and I, of, of course, am your host, Kat Ward. And I'm going to do something a little different this episode. I've had a few people comment saying that the introduction was a little too long for their liking, and they just fast forward, fast forward, showing my age, right? Just skip to the uh, to the meat and potatoes. So we're just going to jump into it this time, and I have a very special treat for you tonight, today, this morning, wherever you're located, and um, we're just going to jump into it. And um, so I'd like to welcome Richard McGill. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. As I told uh, the listeners, I have a special treat. I've never talked about this particular topic before, and um, this is really exciting oh, really? for me. I didn't so, know that. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, I've, I've spoken up a little bit about aliens, but not pre not mainly your field so we're just going to jump into it and if you could please tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're going to be discussing well my name is richard mcgill i'm from uh ontario so uh, we have that in common from, yep. uh mississauga specifically nice and um i was a forklift driver a few uh, about three eight four years ago and for jokes just for poops and laughs i tried to contact aliens one night and uh, 15 minutes in, I see a little light skip across the sky, and I continue to try to, in and I was so excited, I continue to try to interact with them, just prove to my coworkers that the stars and the moon are most likely sentient beings, and try to telepathically, hey, move left, move right, and a few weeks of interacting with them, uh, they somehow, one night, 4.30 in the morning, I was a forklift driver that worked afternoons, so I was up 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning. So uh, after a couple couple weeks of this, four in the morning, I was trying to fil trying to film a star, and uh, somehow it locked onto my cell phone and created a half a blue circle where the lens is. And ever since then, I, my townhouse was really really messy. So I was able. I I'll basically, long story short, I asked aliens to make me a smiley face in the sky and invited them into my house to party, and they took me up on both offers. And now I'm their personal documentarian, stage crew, photographer, BFF. Who knows what else? <laughs> Conciliary. <laughs> I do like to watch a lot of mom movies. <laughs> they're, they're mainly telling. They probably te te tell me more than I teach them. But <laughs> that's cool. So, so uh, yeah, I'm self-publishing a photo book containing artwork nice. made by them. Mm -hmm. It's like 3D virtual reality, kind of like SimCity. It's like mm -hmm. basically what we all know as crop circles Great. is kindergarten level or guerrilla marketing compared to what they make me. Hmm. And um, I'm giving 50% of the profits to environmental causes. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we make a little bit of money that we can uh, save a few uh, or clean up the environment a little bit. Very important cause. So the, the first time you you um, tried to contact them, how did you do it? Was it telepathically? Uh, yeah, basically, I don't want to rain on the relig religious people's braids, but basically the same thing. You just pr pray to the universe. Mm -hmm. I want, um, so uh, before that, actually, on my 31st birthday, a few months before I started interact, in, interacting with them, I noticed a flash in the sky, like a light in the sky, and I probably thought it was a UFO, but I didn't really see anything, so that got me interested in the topic. Before that, I was never really into science fiction at all, and um, I, 
uh, watched a YouTube video that kind of document the uh, details how how to do it. I was in Venezuela when I was 19. I'm 30, about to be 35. But when I was 19, I was sick and tired of university. After my first year, I just said, "What's the cheapest place outside of North uh, outside of Europe?" And they said Venezuela. I didn't know about the crime rate or the, the drug problem. Rate. I just all right, whatever. So I spent uh, over five weeks traveling around. And I bought a joint off some hippies, and I was in the Amazon jungle, like the, the capital, mm. called Puerto Ayacucho. And I went on with some kids to see a natural water slide. And it was half the environment, half the uh, half the location, half the good weed. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm in a, a garage. Um, okay. And ever felt, er, everything was moving. Like, like, you really become one with the universe. And I used that feeling to try to... You know, yes, telepathically to contact them, and it only took me 15 minutes to see a little light skip across the sky, and I continued for another 15, 20 minutes, nothing. I guess most people would just say, okay, that's their alien experience, you know. You know, there's so many sightings, all these big things, but no one actually puts it in an effort to contact them themselves. But when they do, you get a lot of uh, you. You try to interact with them, and they'll interact with you back. If you leave them alone, then they don't care about you, and they don't. Well, I don't know if they don't care about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not going to go looking for you if you're not looking for them. Well, they're probably all around us, but if yeah. you don't, like my my sister was doesn't believe me, and she was there, and uh, and she and she nothing, and she was completely oblivious to the light energy moving all around. But me, I was really observant, and I was trying to interact with them first. And uh, yeah. <laughs> What made you decide to try that? Um, just because, like I said, that just something happened on my br birthday, that, yeah. like, and that got me interested in the subject. I've never seen Star Wars or ET, but I have watched Men in Black and Mars Attacks. Mm -hmm. But so I'm kind of like blank slate that they. And I had a, uh, I have some successful business people in my family, so they probably, real, and I had uh, a little bit. My mother passed away, and I had an inheritance, so I was able oh, to take sorry. three and a half years without working and invest about seventy five thousand dollars to create the book and print 5,000 copies. Wow. So they probably, they realized, hey, this guy, I was really creative in high school, but then I wanted to get into advertising or uh, become a lawyer, and I settled on advertising. But uh, then I got, I didn't really like the course I was in and did not really nothing with my life. And so now I have like a dream job that's kind of like a combination of both. So it's wow. like, it's kismet, basically. Like, mm. it, we, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know the listeners would want to know, but can you walk us through how, exactly what you do when you try and communicate with them? Or not try, but when you do communicate with them? It's basically just thinking aloud. Like, the, I like to say everyone is in cahoots except uh, Earthlings. And, I, I, you know, you can... There are in other dimensions, there are on other planets. But what I've read that they can, from other planets... They don't even have to be on a spaceship or close by. They can be on their other planet, far away, and just they have really powerful brains that they can telepathically, telepathically communicate with us. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's the same thing with seances or something. Mm -hmm. But I, I really, I just I think aloud, like like that. Um, I'll say one thing. I have a little green one-eyed alien fish or shrimp. Basically, all I just thought in my mind, hey, like, I would like to try some of your food. And then I found it outside my bedroom door soon afterwards. Oh, wow. If, any, if anyone, uh, I'll do a quick shout out to my, or uh, a plug, sorry, to uh, my Twitter page. If anyone wants to, like, look, I don't know if you're going to have any pictures up. Yes, Probably I will. not. So, you are? Yes. Um, I, um, for the YouTube video, I like to put pictures. So, because the oh. uh, listeners like to actually look at pictures as well. Yeah, that, no, that's all, that would definitely help the, mm -hmm. what, what, what I'm talking about if they actually see. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so then we, I'll just say alien fish, and then you, we already already sent you a list of everything, right? So, yep. Cool, cool. Uh, okay, so for, so uh, yeah, I'm a little one-eyed, green-eyed, one. It's really, really tiny. Little. Uh, it fits inside a memory a memory card case. It's really, really uh -huh. tiny. But just I just asked, thinking aloud. Hey, let me try some food. So basically, like, <laughs> I don't think whenever people say, "Oh, I have voices in my head." People assume you're crazy. So the aliens have been really careful not to really speak to me. Like, I've had maybe a couple words in my mind or, or like, discuss things. 
like uh just re- i'll just give you an example uh, a couple days ago um some i was i had a word uh segregation come into my mind and then then uh a few hours early like literally an hour later someone comes and uh starts building a fence right beside me oh really? where, I, where, I, where i was yeah. i'm like oh my goodness they play games like that like light-hearted word games hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be or it could be a coincidence like you know there's always that there's there are coincidences it's not all aliens but usually when you interact with aliens the coincidences are much more uh enjoyable <laughs> and kind sublime the, kind of like that in the paranormal we don't uh, really uh say that there's coincidences really yeah happenstance more likely yeah it's uh, it's just some things are just too crazy to to be able to just say yeah that was a coincidence it's just it's just really crazy some of the things but I, mm-hmm. I, but at the I, same I, time but at the same time there's <clears throat> there are a billion people on earth so sometimes you know the qu- the amount of people hop hop you know coinciding and interacting mm-hmm. sometimes you, you know we were talking we were talking to my buddy yesterday about numerology he's really really into that but today I think I, I'm, I like to say I'm in my own James Bond movie, kind of right. And today I saw three zero zero sevens. Does that oh, really? does that mean anything, or is it just me going around enough places and paying enough attention to, for that to happen? Uh-huh. So we'll, we'll we'll never know. We'll never never know the right wh- whether that is most it's, likely, right? It's kind yeah. of like uh, let's say you buy a red car, and all of a sudden you notice red cars all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the ways I try to um, actually, like, like the, the most difficult part is to interact with them is, what's your imagination? Are you actually trying, are you communicating with them telepathically? So one of my uh, ways to do that is try to get them to tell me a word before I open a fortune cookie. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like the, the best example. I haven't been able to win the lottery. I've only got three out of six numbers. So please, nobody... Try to contact aliens and waste all your money <laughs> on uh, them giving you the right answers. Yeah. But so I thought of the word uh, hiccups. It mm-hmm. just came into my mind, and then I opened the wrapper, opened the fortune cookie, and the fortune says, "Be prepared for a sudden and unexpected change of events." So I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> hiccups." Oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Have you ever had it? They're, they're, actually, light, they're you, lighthearted. They're not what we all think of them. They might look, when they're just staring at you when you use your third eye, they just mm-hmm. look like they're, I don't know, like a blank stare kind of, but they're they're not nefarious, they're not evil. They're they're lighthearted and jovial. Can you describe their, a, how, what they look like physically? Um, well... The tall well, or for, short? The very... The very well, I don't. They're in your mind, so I don't really. Right. They don't. You only see their face mainly. Oh, you know, okay. I can't. Most likely, they're kind of short. Most likely, mm-hmm. but I think I'm sure there's lo- uh, lots of the different types. That's the thing. I can't really say I'm interacting with the reptilians or the greys or the Nordics. I can't. It's it's. There's too much for, for me to, you know. I'm I can't waste all my memory. I'm sure maybe if I get abducted when I'm sleeping and they wipe your mind, you don't remember anything. But if I were to get hypnotized or something maybe i'll be able to re- recite lots but i really don't want to get hypnotized mm-hmm. but what they the very first um time i saw it, one in my mind was uh like a gray mm. what, what we all like know is that but yep. mainly they're like really cute like um reptilian like cartoonish kind of characters a lot of them that uh kind of like a cartoon version of a like a lizard okay but really like wide eyes really cute Hmm. Jokesters, I think I, I, I'm sure I've been documenting all of their type, all their different art, all the different types of them. It's like a, I call it an Encyclopedia Galactica. Oh, that nice. everyone, everyone's gonna want to help make some pictures so the world can see what they look like. Now, Most they, likely. Do they come from uh, another planet, another galaxy, or is it another dimension, or all of the above? <laughs> I could I really couldn't answer that. That's sure. a thing. But um, uh, let me grab my book for one second. One second. Sure. Um. So one of my hypotheses mm-hmm. 
Okay, so well, I'll talk about my um, my selfie. So we we can well maybe that'll help explain a little bit. So I'm by myself in my room take uh, taking pictures, and I'm like I say I'm partying with aliens, but it's just me. And but I sprinkle something, and aliens whip it, like UFO energy, spring uh, whip, whips it up, and I, like I would sprinkle like powdered graphite or charcoal, mm -hmm. or I've, I've done hundreds of different substances. But um, so <laughs> I was one day I um, made like silly, s lewd sexual sock puppet gestures, do 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 do, <laughs> like playing a sock puppet game, mm -hmm. into in front of my digital camera. I didn't take any pictures, and I had just got a new cell phone. The next day, a picture appeared on my phone that uh, looks it. Uh, if you well, I sent you the picture. It's mm -hmm. called the Alien UFO selfie. You'll put it up. Yep. It's um, an R. You don't see the face, unfortunately, <laughs> but you, you gotta buy the book to see the face. <laughs> <laughs> but you, an uh, alien arm most is doing the ex and then doing the exact same gesture that i was doing and you see a little uh u small ufo floating above the f the the source of it is cover camera which means that the, the it's not a screenshot but the file size is about the screenshot it was in kilobytes if you take a normal picture it's in megabytes mm -hmm. so I, I like to say this is the first alien ufo selfie from another dimension whether they how they locked into my cell phone from space so they easily they could transfer a picture most likely it's not i'm sure it's not that difficult Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, when was the last I, I, time you communicated? Go ahead. No, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Go I on. was just going to say, when was the last time you communicated with them? Oh, I, I think talk to them all every day, all the time. Oh, really? You know how okay. you, you probably, everyone probably does when they're talking to themselves. They just don't realize that someone's probably listening. Mm -hmm. Is we're maybe our space brothers and sisters. Everyone always, you know, talks to themselves. Yeah. See, you know, most likely, but yeah, if you, it's hard to see when, uh, during the day, but when you go home at night and when you're lying in your bed, you close your eyes and, uh, just try to, to or, or meditate, you can see, you can see entities, whether they're interdimensional or extraterrestrial, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the an unfortunately I don't have the answers. I'm not a uh, ufologist. I'm just mm -hmm. a normal uh, everyday person that has been given a dream job that nobody ever dreamed of. <laughs> that's yeah. That's and I appreciate, interesting. appreciate the offer. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So I can't. Again? We're gonna put a lot more, make a lot more questions, but at least we're at least uh, the debate on whether aliens are real or not is hopefully will be put to rest and mm -hmm. we can move forward. Hopefully. Hopefully. If this. Uh, it gets out. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, so is it just, I, I take it you interact with more than just one, correct? Oh, most likely, yes. Yeah. Do they, mm -hmm. how do you identify them? Do, uh, do they have names? <laughs> uh, the, uh, that's the thing, right? You don't really know. Mm. I thought one of them was named Xenon, and mm. I had read a book, um, I read about six books on the subject after after I started interacting with them to figure th things out a little bit, get a little bit, uh, you know, so I could have things to say, and one of uh, the book was uh, Does It Rain in Other Dimensions by M Mike Oram, mm -hmm. and he says he's interacting with them, and his buddy, alien buddy, is named Zenap, Xenon oh. Zenap. So I thought, oh, okay, very, very similar. So that, mm -hmm. you know, adds a little, yeah, maybe, maybe it, that's true. And then I found out that there's some sort of xenon thing in, um, it's like a chemical or something, or an element from Mars or something to do with uh, radioact or radioactiveness or nuclear explosions. Or so I didn't really look into it too much, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe that might be a foretelling if we don't get our uh, act together. Third World War, who knows? But <laughs> yeah, no fake. I think I'm here to prevent the fake alien invasion. That if they say that happens, I'm gonna say no. They've been interacting with me for over three and a half years. They make me art. They're jovial. They're not. They're they want to make some money and help clean up other environment because we're not doing it. Mm. <laughs> you know, or enough. That's interesting. So, 
you think their goal is to try and communicate with other, uh, I'm going to say beings, not necessarily humans on this planet, to try and uh, clean up the, the globe because perhaps they understand about pollution and, and everything? Do you think that would be why? Uh, absolutely. That's, that's what I've read about uh, crop circles. Mm -hmm. Everyone, no, no, sorry, not crop circles, uh, cattle mutila mutilations mm -hmm. that everyone gets so upset, oh, the aliens are stealing our cows. What what aliens have s stolen, or not even steal, they, well, like, I guess they killed it, if they did that, but what I've read from uh, Jim Mars' Alien Agenda book, and we, basically we've killed what aliens have taken and killed, and they bring them back, first off, and they put, <laughs> they only cut out like a certain amount to test, they say they te use it to test for industrial pollutants. And they bring them, but they bring the cows back, and they're like puts imbued. I call it imbued. I don't know if that's the exact word, mm -hmm. but they put something in it that the predators don't even get them, so they can still use the meat. And but what, what aliens have done and killed is not even like uh, a one shift on a normal slaughterhouse for for five decades. Hmm. So really, like we're we're the real boogeyman, not not aliens. And I think they're that's what because we're closely related to cows. If they had abducted humans, then yeah. Obviously, that people will be a lot more upset. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I just forgot the next question I was going to ask because I was just picturing some things for some reason. I was just picturing, um, you probably haven't seen this movie before, uh, Close Encounters of a Third Kind. No, no. no. It was Spielberg, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a really no. good movie. but yeah. So <laughs> No, I can't. I can't, I can't tell you what I... Nope. Yeah. No idea. Do you know how long they've <laughs> been trying they to... That. That's why they picked you? Most likely. So I don't have any... Like every time I read something and there's some... The only book I read that was really negative aspect, uh, put the painted aliens in a negative aspect, was mm -hmm. uh, Montauk. Montauk, the project. Uh, this guy, he had no proof to back it up. Only thing, only proof he had was that he spoke uh, like a whole bunch of different languages. He had no actual physical evidence. That's the thing about me. All my my stories and proof, like some things I'll say, I have no proof to back it up. Uh, this is just my my own hypothesis or what I've other people's things combined with mine. But if I say I have an alien fish, I have it. Only thing in my selfie, I lost my cell phone. Someone stole it, and I don't have the original. That's the uh -huh. only thing. I, my gifts from aliens, my alien fish, I still have it. It'll be test. Hopefully, it'll eventually get tested if I can ever get a hold of. Uh, a, a scientific person. Mm -hmm. No, no university has uh, replied to my email. But I oh. say I can back back up. But the Montauk they had talked about like abductions and like stealing kids and stuff. So it's it was in a negative aspect. But when you we read that, then you get in your own mind. Well, that's negative. Maybe aliens are negative. But I can honestly say I have not had one uh, negative as experience with aliens. Well, that's good. Do you know how long they've been uh, trying to communicate with uh, with us here on on Earth? Have they ever said? Uh, no. Like I said, they don't really talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. From and my own my own personal thing, I when I took a picture when I was in Venezuela when I was nineteen, and I see a big uh, UFO in the background that I didn't um, didn't even know they were had their eye on me. But for the world that, uh, in general, I couldn't tell you that. Okay. Nope. Getting back, I'm really interested with it in this fish. Um, is it alive? Mm. How, how are you keeping it? <laughs> is it alive? <laughs> no, of course it's not alive. It's dehydrated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just, I, just, I, I just asked them, hey, let me try some food. And I found mm. it outside my bedroom door. And they, they put a, there was a Q-tip next to it. I like to say that we party, I party with alien, aliens. And they brought me uh, a party snack. It's it's really really small. Yeah. It kind of looks like a shrimp, but it's green, and it only has one eye. The other side is like flat. So there are uh, fish on Earth that are only have one eyes, I believe. So it's not too spectacular, but it's really really tiny. And um, yeah, it's it started to get a little brownish, and I put it in, a, in my freezer. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's still there. Okay. No, I, I had visions of uh, this little tiny alien fish in a little fishbowl swimming around with one eye. 
<laughs> you can call him Blinky. No, no, no. No. <laughs> uh, no, the other, I, uh, yeah, I was thinking either that or you had it uh, frozen or something, but okay. <laughs> no, I did, yeah, I did yeah. keep it frozen. I did keep it frozen, but then I moved. So now it's in my cousin's garage for uh, at least six, seven months. So hopefully when I go to check on it, it's not decomposed. Yeah. That would be very, uh, but most likely it'll be all right. It's How's really, it's, I keep it in the, in a memory card case. So okay. it's not too much oxygen is going to get at it. Mm -hmm. So That's if any, if any scientific uh, people are listening, feel free to uh, hit me up on my Twitter page, Richard McGill number two, uh, M-A-G-I-L-L, -L, not, not the university MC, M-A-G-I-L-L. Direct message me and uh, help get me this fish analyzed because it could people the excuses. I don't. If you want to come through with me and say, "Oh, it's something like it's something uh, like actually something like people say it's a rotten banana, it's a pickled shrimp, it's seaweed, it's none of those things." Like you can see it, mm -hmm. you know. So you give me. I'm, I'm looking for a logical. I did think I, I thought I found another one a few months later. But actually, when you take two seconds to look at it, it was just a green pepper off of a pizza. Oh, but this okay. one has a little translucent eye. So most likely, it's not a little onion like that's embedded into the green pepper. Mm -hmm. I could I could be, maybe, but I really don't think so. <laughs> I looked at it a lot. You can look, look, zoom into it, the picture, and you can see it looks like a little one-eyed alien fish or shrimp. Hmm. For the uh, Twitter, I'll also add the uh, link to your Twitter page, or... Twitter page, you know what I mean. I'll uh, add that to the show notes so people can just click on it and find you easily that way. Well, you can also do uh, my my uh, YouTube channel mm -hmm. is Richard McGill, Richard and then McGill M A G I L L. There's lots of videos of the. Uh, it's it's basically why we can't really. There's not too many videos of UFOs making crop circles. Is because they for me at least they come down or is you just see like a light mist. Or fog they do it invisibly so there's lots of videos on my YouTube channel of that but there's a one 19 minute video in which they actually appeared and it's um, they, one of my hypotheses is so after I quit my job and then I bought a digital camera and I focused on documenting th this art of theirs the very first day I'm in my backyard and a little translucent uh, ladybug sized UFO uh -huh. Um, makes still there. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Oh, I just okay. uh, talking to something. <laughs> um, so, so the very first, so they uh, a little translucent blue ladybug size UFO was doodling in my barbecue lid. So my one of my hypotheses is that they can. We have nanotechnology. Humans do. So why wouldn't aliens? Mm -hmm. And um, I've talked to another fellow. Uh, UFO, uh, person who's tried to interact with the aliens called Cristo Rapolo. I've got a whole, he's the only person uh, that I've been able to actually have a quick few email uh, discussion with. And he's also familiar with uh, the, the tiny sized UFOs. And Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, is the, one of the head honchos of the, in the UFO field, he says that a whole mile wide UFO can shrink. I, I don't know how. I know we're Canadian. I, I'm he said the mile. I don't know what that is for kilometers, huh. but, but uh, it can sh a huge, ginormous UFO can shrink down into a basketball-sized UFO. So this 19-minute video, I uh, just sprinkle a substance down, which I think was char uh, yeah charcoal. But I didn't. Cr I didn't, you can buy powdered charcoal, but this I some I, sometimes I crush it up myself, and I don't think I crushed it up enough. So they brought so they brought their uh, big guns in. And by big guns, I mean a little insect-sized UFO. So if you go to the video on my YouTube channel, there's a 19-minute video, and you'll be able to find it. There's only two 19-minute videos. One of them, I also make music with uh, on my ukulele. If you're, if you guys like uh, Led Zeppelin, I'm trying a one-man Led Zeppelin band. I love Zeppelin. But um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm definitely pr probably the conduit because the music aliens probably help me with that. So there's very unique sounds. Wear, wear headphones, but this 19-minute mm -hmm. video, um, fast forward the whole thing to see the only thing moving, but uh, about the 4-minute, 15-second mark, a little insect-sized UFO floats onto the screen 
and by the screen, the area is uh, there's a piece of paper down. So on the bottom left corner, it uh, floats onto the paper and then stops and then wobbles back and forth and then makes uh, such a slow motion, like preposterously, this ain't a normal insect slow motion backflip or somersault with a weird sound that's accompanied with it. I don't know. I was doing some deep breathing. There was there was a gas leak in my townhouse, so maybe oh. uh, <laughs> I was getting a little. I know it was. I moved out of it, but it was a really bad environment. <laughs> but uh, the insect makes a like a somersault or backflip onto the paper, and then it meanders across it for five minutes. And then when it gets to the edge of the other side of the paper, around the nine minute mark, you gotta watch really closely, and it like um, shakes a little bit, and then <laughs> pops out of our dimension. So oh, wow. uh, that's the not the best quality video because it was a uh, a cheap tablet, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know that anything like that was going to happen. But it's uh, yeah, it's uh, insects. Don't if you're if you see a fly in your house, don't be hitting it because it might be a UFO, <laughs> ladies oh. and gentlemen. <laughs> you never know. Would they be that <laughs> size, or would they look like like a fly, just that size? Uh. Well, I have oh, another picture. I never really haven't shared it too much. Like this crazy, like winged uh, insect that maybe that's something. But I think other people have said they uh, come down and fly. Like they can. Um, I don't know your mind. Are you familiar with Dor Dolores Cannon? You must be. No. You know? No. Are you no. kidding me? <laughs> oh, no, not a single podcast. You're my fourth podcast. Only the first one. He knew that she's a hypnotherapist that does, she, she like, uh, try to get with, um, Nostradamus, but oh. she, so she's, she's a, hip, a really famous hypnotherapist. She wrote, you just type her in on uh, YouTube it's, or she also, she also has a bunch of books, but she's a hypnotherapist that when you get hypnotized, she asks, can I speak to your subconscious? And then she'll say, and you'll say, okay, this is the cat's subconscious. Mm -hmm. And and Loris will say, does the uh, cat, cat saw uh, a different uh, weird uh, insect the other day? Was that an insect? And and your subconscious usually doesn't lie. And you'll say, no, that was a UFO pretending, or an alien pretending to be an insect. In the, in the, one of the books I read, she, I read three of her books. They sh mentioned it was a, an owl, a strange owl, that when they got hypnotized... It was uh, a, you, an alien. Uh, your subconscious wants to not scare you, so it makes it. It's called screen memories. What was your name again? I have to I look that, that up. Del Dolores Cannon, C A N N O N. Okay, that sounds yeah. interesting. It's, uh, I have to look it's, good, that up. it's good to know because, like, you'd think that your subconscious, when you're hypnotized, is not going to lie. So you'd think that the the, the information that I would gather from those books are a little bit more genuine than other books, but mm. yeah, I can't, I, you know, that's for me, for me, I did walk into my, uh, room about 15, 20 years ago and there was a little swarm of bee, little bunch of bees, small swarm in the corner. And I remember going into my walk-in closet, grabbing a whole bunch of clothing on and coming out and trying to try to kill them all. But that's all I remember. I don't know. I didn't get stung. That's, I remember that too. But I don't know how. I don't think I killed them. Like my com memory is completely blank after that. So possibly that was an extraterrestrial experience that I wasn't aware of. Maybe, or maybe not. I'll have to get hypnotized to find the truth. <laughs> hmm. Would you be willing to get hypnotized by someone? Yeah, I think I would on, on TV or something. It would be it would be something fun to do. Hmm. But I'm afraid now. If I do it, say that, then I'm really gonna be. I have to do my studying when I'm sleeping. They'll probably take me and tell me lots of, like, knitter, like hammer things in my head. <laughs> one, one of the, I keep saying, one of the, to go back to environmental, mm -hmm. one of the things uh, they talk to me, I think they telling me about is the oil that we're taking out from underneath the ground. Mm -hmm. It's like last year was, um, I read the, the oceans were the hottest recorded temperature in the oceans. And by taking all the oil from underneath, it's kind of like um, like pa like painting yourself in a corner, but we're taking the foundation out from underneath our feet. Mm -hmm. And also, it's like insulating. The oil is probably insulating from the the hot magma core from the from the the mantle or underneath. I'm not a scientist. 
I could be just talking out of my ass. But most likely, I think that's one of the reasons aliens are telling me that. <laughs> now, I have heard other people, uh, when they say they've been abducted, that uh, aliens have discussed about our... our the, how we're destroying the planet and they're trying to help us to save it to try and get us to stop doing what we're doing absolutely i know when you start interacting with them you're not gonna i, I ask them they give you memories but and then you, and like fun fun uh interactions that's um money and material wealth and and having the biggest car it it mm -hmm doesn't ring as much ring to to as much as possible right i feel like i i'm completely broke now i've invested all my money but i feel like a billionaire i can honestly say mm. just through this interacting and having this this whole this experience with them so people yeah they're they want you they want you just to not be like hippies stinky smelly do nothing <laughs> hi hippies but yeah before before i before i met them i never never took up painting or took up making music and after interacting with them i have lots of music and i have lots of painting which okay. it will also plug my uh my instagram account which is mainly a little more artistic mm -hmm. my paintings compared to um my twitter page which is solely on ufos it's mcgill underscore richard okay. for my instagram again I'll anyone wants to into our uh, into the show notes as well but yeah <laughs> that's so, all that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like they've opened up your crea creative side. Absolutely. It was dormant yes. from when I was in high school I would make a lot of uh fun videos for like to for like class projects and I had an Australian my grade 10 English teacher from Australia and I told her I want to get into advertising and she was so just like dismayed like oh you what are you wasting your time making ads for beer and stuff when you can do something so so much more. And now this is like uh I, it's a, such a great combination like aliens are my one client and I have to prove to them that proof to the world that they're real mm -hmm. they're guilty of being real and using uh, advertising such as my tweets on Twitter and now I'm doing the media rounds this is through my fourth uh, I've done three podcasts first one uh, you had me at Bigfoot the oddball Ozzy and podcast of mystery I just did mm -hmm. his uh, yesterday and then today you'll be my fourth nice <laughs> I might have a fifth coming up. We'll I don't know. We'll see. He's cast ass and co-host. But I haven't. I've had such a hard time. I've been sending out so many emails. Um, I I'm not gonna. Uh, t well, I'll say, I'll say the CBC. The CBC has refused to report on me. I've got finally got a hold of them. Even from Vancouver, I sent out a couple hundred emails, and they finally got a hold of me. And they said it's not their job to report on anything I refer to as extraterrestrials. Oh. So I'm, I'm, yeah, they, I don't. It's up to it's up to grassroots grassroots like uh, individuals like yourself mm -hmm. that are gonna help uh, get me a little bit of uh, mainstream attention. Hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood. Well, at least CBC uh, actually replied to you. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I I had to do a, a send a lot of emails. I had one from Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan CBC radio show, and says, "Oh, while your photography seems interesting, we're a local show, so a local news station, so we're not going to report on you." Hmm. <laughs> and, wow. But I, I also had—I'm not going to name the name—but uh, a very independent news uh, Canadian uh, thing that had they over—they have over a million followers on YouTube, and I hmm. actually went to downtown or uh, downtown toronto i live in mississauga which is like a 45 minute drive mm -hmm. from uh, from downtown toronto but they he said the reporter said he was going to be at the old city hall uh to report on a uh, follow-up for someone for like uh a, doesn't really matter what but i uh, so i spent the whole day w camping outside waiting to waiting to see this person and he never showed up oh. but then on christmas day i was outside a local diner and i met his cameraman and we got talking and he was going to turn into a reporter so on new year's uh day no, new year's eve sorry uh i was so excited finally i'm in my big break uh he comes to meet me and says oh sorry the producers say they can't they can't we're not we're not we can't do it it's not part of their agenda and i was so dismayed but then 
uh, New Year's happened, and a uh, week or two later, the Eyeball Ozzy uh, connected with me on Twitter. Said, "I really, I really interested in your stuff. Can we have a chat?" And I did, and we did, and that got me. Hey, I didn't really realize how many paranormal podcasts there were. I just typed in paranormal podcast on Twitter oh, and hit, uh, hit it up a, every single one. Mm-hmm. And uh, you replied. You didn't have a. I don't think you had a direct message. So I actually had sent you something, and we started talking, and uh, here we are right now. Yeah. So I appreciate. It the opportunity i really do i appreciate you uh reaching out absolutely (laughs) i'm not really a fan of this uh uh like uh center of attention but Mm -hmm. uh i guess i kind of have to kind of have to uh it's part and parcel of uh the gig i got (laughs) now do you think maybe the reason why you reached out to them is maybe they already knew about you and they kind of uh pushed you a little bit to try and communicate with them you know what i mean absolutely absolutely i said yeah <laughs> that they entra- entrapped me a little bit but in mm. a good way entrapped me right that yeah. they put the flash in the light yeah. or flash the sky and that got me interested in the subject mm-hmm. and yeah and then i then i'm true well i'm trying to interact with them and no they they really want to they probably do that with lots of people there's lots of lights in the sky lots of different things mm-hmm. like U- ufo things but no one actually uh put us i guess i was i persisted in it and mm-hmm. uh yeah as i said there's good there's uh a couple couple family members that are really uh strong business my, my he i'm jewish my mm-hmm. hebrew name is uh eliyahu rubin so i like to say a joke that maybe they thought they were getting into uh, uh cahoots with um someone from yahoo <laughs> an executive from Yahoo. <laughs> Maybe. I was thinking of a Reuben sandwich, but <laughs> Maybe they were hungry. <laughs> yeah, you uh, uh, you have a good point there. They probably do that to so many different people and people exactly. just dismiss it and say they're just flashing lights and you know just a a twinkling star or something and uh, don't they just ignore it. Uh, but a handful of people probably want to pursue it like you did and are doing. Correct. And, um, yeah, it makes me wonder how many people they've, they've tried to communicate with. It just, it, I, I, there's probably exactly, countless. Yeah, but, but at the same time, how, how many people is willing to, has the ability, to, has the ability to take three years of the time documenting mm-hmm. their art, uh, may, maybe be their conduit for music. And was willing to give them f- their share of the profits. Mm-hmm. I, I say aliens understand the concept of, of monopoly, and they play for keeps. Mm-hmm. So they found someone who, whether I make fifty dollar profit or uh, a couple million prof- profit, fifty percent of it is going to environmental causes. So I, the, I have about forty eight hundred books left from the first five thousand order. When I redo them, once they're sold out, it'll be at least thirty percent. Uh, recycled paper so i don't want to kill too many trees yeah but nice. if you if you can i don't it's the, the books are not on uh amazon they're not on uh they're not gonna be on walmart i've had um they're only directly i'm trying to do something philip 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 can never say that word <laughs> philip thran Phila, you know fun char- charitable yes <laughs> Phila, you know the word it's a tongue Phila, twister Phila, 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 up there on Tropic. <laughs> uh, um, I was going to try to get libraries to. So any businesses, listen, any person that has a business and they want to sell my book, you can also interact with, uh, message me on Twitter. But also, if you, uh, it's good. Um, I, ha- I was going to say thirty-five bucks, but I'm not making any money on that, and it's going to be about fifteen, twenty bucks to ship the book to you. So. With taxes, with shipping, fifty dollars Canadian. You PayPal me through. Uh, you message me on Twitter, Richard McGill too. I promise you, you'll get a book nice. delivered right to your door. I've already, I've already had my first international uh, customer. It's like, it's like the game SimCity. You have to SimCity. You have to have the book. You put it down, and it's not, it's not simple two D ge- geometric shapes and patterns. It's like I say. It's like to be able to travel to other planets and dimensions without leaving your couch. So you put the book down and you take your phone and you zoom into the pictures. 
one from different lengths and different um like different how far different how far away from you are and how mm-hmm. the zoom lengths like one picture one page would be like an hour of fun it's like i call it like sim city and where's waldo because <laughs> when you zoom in really close there's also like really tiny little different a myriad of variety of alien and uh, individuals all different creeds colors <laughs> nice styles <laughs> yeah it's very it's, it's crazy i've taken twenty thousand pictures I still have no idea what I'm doing. Honestly, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally twenty thousand. Or... Pic- Sorry, go on. Literally twenty thousand pictures. Of course, yes. I've taken wow. three. I have twelve, thirteen memory cards. You know, I lost a memory card that when my cam, my yeah. phone was stolen. Yeah. That was very disappointing. That was like six months of work gone. But I have like twelve, thirteen memory cards full of pictures. It's honestly, I, m- most people. I know it's it's kind of weird if you would start interacting with them you'd maybe interacting a little bit and then try to go to the, the media right away me i take my time i get into photography i learn how to do it i read books on the subject try to understand things and then i get into the music which most likely they help me and i get into uh make a whole bunch of paintings which the paintings are going to be um they're for sale too if you want to go into my instagram page but some of them, but mm-hmm. uh, they're also for the, the second edition. I, I, ha- I probably have enough photos for two, three editions. I want to make it like a series, like uh, when they say that the chicken, chicken, uh, chicken soup for a soul. Oh yeah, <laughs> chicken soup for a soul book series. Yeah, my, the, title of my bo- the title of my book is "What Do You Mean Aliens Aren't Real?" I don't know. I don't know how to make virtual reality art. I'm just a trigger man. So I want people to say, oh, the new, what do you mean, alien book is out. Mm. <laughs> How many books yeah. do you think you'll be putting out there? Do you have an idea? <laughs> I'm sure there is an innumerable, innumerable amount of uh, aliens that want to get their art. It depends, supply and demand. I think I'm the only one that has aliens as my business partners, but it's, it's so hard to break into the mainstream mm-hmm. and hopefully if they people actually do like the book and i would be willing to do a few different editions of course uh well this was uh, i'm not going back to driving forklift i'll tell you that much yeah <laughs> it's like i feel i have a little side job but i feel bad doing that i should be i should be going around 10 hours a day asking people knocking on the doors hey showing them the book try to get the the word out mm-hmm. but it's so hard with this virus people are oh, so afraid they're afraid of their shadow yeah but you know i think um, that it's, they partially waited for me for this to happen, like why it's taking so long and why I haven't had such an impetuousness to go gung-ho and get, and uh, show to the world that this is what's going on, is maybe because now that the virus has taken place, um, I, that, uh, that now everyone's in such a piss-poor mood, right? That mm-hmm. now this alien's mm-hmm. whole story is going to come out and it's really gonna revitalize and catal- it's gonna be a catalyst for positive change, most likely. Well, we definitely could use a positive change. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we're almost at the end here already. So, I was wondering if you had any final things to say to the listeners. Uh, thank you for listening to me ramble on and on, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you that I'm not. I might be a little crazy, but I'm not delusional. I really ha- have extraterrestrials as my business partners. I have gifts for them, gifts from them. I have the fish. I have uh, uh, the music, and I have lot the book. And the books are ready to go. Mm-hmm. They've been sitting on my warehouse shelves for over a year and a half. Uh, on Twitter, it's um, like aliens were trending a few weeks ago, but the Galactic Federation something about the israeli di- diplomat saying mm-hmm. hu- humans aren't ready for aliens we we can't handle it well whether or not we can handle it the earth really needs our help and you buy my book and 50 percent of the profits are going to help the environment and if you don't buy my book that's fine you don't have to but all i'm going to say is don't ask the universe for any favors any anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> or or ask them i don't know i'm not gonna i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to jinx everybody have a great day <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> well, thank you so very much, Richard, for being on Paranormal Heart. I really appreciate you being here. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that you, the world will listen. Oh, much obliged. Thank you so much for having me. My All pleasure. Right. Have a great night. You too. Well, we've made it to the end of another episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care of each other. And if you'd like to be on the show or have questions and comments, just drop me an email, paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Paranormal Heart would like to extend a special thank you to PurplePlanet.com for supplying the music for the show. The views and opinions expressed on Paranormal Heart are those of the host and participants. 